Okay, so today is round two. I have the camera that I'm sending back. Wolfbox rear view mirror camera. And then I have the new one that needs to be unwrapped. So basically I'm just gonna replace the whole thing with a new one. I didn't want to go through some process of trying to figure out what was wrong with the other one and then finding out that that wasn't what was wrong with it, it was something else. So got the new one here. Again, round two. So not happy so far with round one, but hopefully round two works out better. And if you didn't see the first video, what I'm talking about is this one installed, had everything essentially ran except the back camera, plugged it in, and it couldn't find the back camera. So I started doing research all over the internet, couldn't find anybody who's had the exact same issue and fixed it themselves. So I just decided to buy another one. I'm going to send this one back. So I have my mirror right here. And again, if you didn't watch that video, I'm installing a rear view camera mirror. The point of this is, you know, after getting the 2023 GMC Denali pickup truck that we have, I didn't realize that I would actually love the rear view camera mirror. At first, when they first came out with it, I thought it was kind of a gimmick. I thought it was just kind of hokey. I didn't really care much about it. But now that we have a truck with it, it's, it's like always my preferred setting to have it on. The only time I don't have it on is when I want to see my daughter who's in the center back seat and it lets me talk to her and see her whenever I'm driving. But the minute she's out of the vehicle, I flip it back because I like being able to see back without the child seat blocking that mirror for me. Now, if the child seat wasn't there, I would still probably use the rear view mirror camera because it just works so dang well. It works great at low light. It works great when it's bright outside. Um, I don't know how well this is gonna work in comparison. It has really great reviews on Amazon, but that doesn't always equate to everybody having a great experience. And when you compare it to like the factory mirrors, at least the videos that I've seen before buying this, the first thing I kind of noticed was it didn't look like it was a smooth motion as the mirror that came on our GMC truck in the factory position, basically the factory rear view mirror mirror. So this hopefully is gonna work just as well. Um, hopefully it works well at night. Hopefully I don't get too much glare. I'm still trying to determine where I wanna place the camera because I have my factory camera up there. It would be absolutely phenomenal if Ford let you use that camera while you're driving. It would be great, but they don't, unfortunately. So I can't use that. And even if I did, it's not high resolution enough to see past the back of the truck very well. You can see into the bed, so you can see what you're hitching up to reasonably well. In my case, not that great because I have this tonneau cover, which rolls up and I have the toolbox, which blocks a lot of the bed view. Um, but yeah, it would be great if I could repurpose that, but I can't. So I'll probably mount the camera to the glass on the outside of the truck, even though I'd really prefer to put it on the inside of the truck because I think it'll last longer. I don't think I'll worry about as many issues happening over time by putting it in the, uh, in the inside of the truck. The problem I have is when it comes to night vision and things like that, when it's on the inside, unfortunately, the window itself can create a glare and that glare can make the camera not work very well. But I might experiment a little bit and see what works best. First thing I wanna do though is take the camera that, or the mirror that I put in the truck, take it out and uh, replace it with this one, and then simply connect the rear view camera, this one to it, and make sure it can identify the camera. Because that was the biggest issue I, I had before. I had ran the entire wire, I'd gotten everything pretty much in place. Um, you got these little retainers. It basically just clips on to the back of your mirror and then once it's on the back of your mirror, you use a little rubber retainers to hold it in place. And once it's held in place like that, you know, it, it looks pretty factory. The mirror in this truck extends a little further beyond this one. So if you're in the passenger seat, you can definitely tell something's over it, but um, it covers most of it. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. That said, let's go ahead and get this thing mounted up. Let's get power going to it and see if the camera actually works on this one. Okay, so here is the one I'm removing. This should be a very, very simple process. I'm just gonna Take the power off, and then take the first rubber band, second rubber band, and then the whole assembly falls off. Use the same little rubber clips, and I'll repackage everything into the, uh, the other package whenever I return it, so I don't have duplicate parts. You can see how the dash camera portion of it just kind of pops out and slides in right here, like this. 
It has a little lens cover on it, a little piece of plastic there. Okay, so I'm gonna simply take it, put it up there like that. Plug the power back into this one. Put the rubber clip on the top like that. Put that one on the top like that. This part is painfully simple. I actually like how well all that comes together. All right, so I have it in place. Let's take the protective film off of it. All right. Okay, format the card. Cool thing about this is that the camera on the front can actually rotate and move slightly, so you don't have to move the whole mirror assembly. You can simply rotate this so it captures what you're looking for. Now we're gonna plug the rear view camera in. Got it right here. There's the plug. And it should come on. There we go. I think that's gonna work for me now. So, yep, so now it's working. And you can see, you know, it's smooth. It's just not, it's not as smooth as the GMC. I can already tell off, right off the bat, it's not gonna be as smooth. And take a little piece of film off the front of it. It's probably gonna be a little clearer. But that works pretty good. And it's actually really bright outside. So I can see the mirror very clearly. This is that little overhang I was telling you about right here. Sorry, the brightness outside makes it look a little dark in here, but this little overhang is the factory mirror, but it's not too bad. And I love the fact that it integrates the dash cam right there so I can remove this dash cam because I'm not gonna need it anymore, unless I wanna put it somewhere else. But yeah, so I just need to route this wire, figure out where I wanna place this camera, and then we should be good to go. So let's start that journey. Okay, so I, what I think I'm gonna do is, you see that camera right there? That's actually to the dash cam that's currently there, and it's affixed to the back of this light bar. Um, I have a pad right there because I had something adhesive stuck there at one point. I think it was another camera mount. I actually forgot. Um, but I'm going to put the new camera right next to that one. Um, I might put it in its place since I won't be using that one anymore. Unfortunately, that camera won't work with this system either. And I don't think I'd want to use it because it's probably not the same resolution. But the reason for this is because of a couple things. First of all, when it rains, I'm not going to have to worry about the lens of the camera getting completely gunked up or covered with water. Secondly, it's gonna be protected from UV and sun and things that can just break things down over time. Third, it's gonna have this tint right here, which actually is gonna help prevent glare and things like that if a vehicle behind me has high beams on or at night, hopefully. Um, and then fourth, it's gonna make it easier to run. I don't have to actually try to get the wire outside of the truck to mount on the, the outside. And fifth, I suppose, it's actually gonna look a little nicer because you're not gonna see it from outside of the truck. So those are all the reasons why I'm gonna try to mount it right there at the same location as that camera. And, uh, and we'll see how it works. And from a, a visibility perspective, the angle, it's actually gonna be at a higher up angle than the factory rear view mirror. So it should still give me, actually give me more visibility than what the, the factory mirror shows me. So we're gonna go ahead and start routing the wire around the passenger side and get it to this location over here. Should be pretty simple, hopefully. Okay, so here is the camera that I've removed from the truck. You can see this one actually has little illuminators on it. Uh, this one's also made to be mounted outside of the vehicle, but it actually worked just fine on the inside of the vehicle. So uh, yeah, we're gonna route the new one around the same area. Let me show you. So basically, I route it from here, up around here, follow this down, down around the bottom here, around that. Okay, so it's gonna wire through here, and these panels are super easy to come off. They just pop right off. It's gonna route up here, and then right to the top right there. Shouldn't take very much time at all, but we'll see. There's an airbag. And something to remember, you never wanna wire something around where an airbag is gonna deploy. Uh, obvious reasons, don't need to really go into explaining why, but yeah, you wanna make sure that you avoid an area where an airbag could deploy and catch the wire, so. Okay, so the next thing I got to do is simply connect this piece of adhesive to the bottom of the camera And then I'm going to use zip ties to hold it in place to the light bar So I don't have to actually drill into anything So these should keep it secured so it doesn't fall off or move just like it did on the other dash camera I had so it should be quick and painless 
Okay, so I have it secured in place right there. Before I finish everything up, I'm, I'm gonna go inside of the truck, make sure everything's aligned, turn on the camera, just make sure everything works. Okay, so I've gotten in the truck, I've started it up. I don't know if you can tell, but it's pointed way, 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 way too far down towards my toolbox. I'm gonna go back there, adjust it up a little bit. Okay, so I'm in the back, I'm gonna make slight adjustments to get the angle I want here. I don't like the fact that one of my defroster strips is right at the bottom of it, but I don't know if I care so much because it's actually over the tailgate or over the bed portion and not over where the camera actually needs to see. But that looks like it might work for me. I'm gonna scoot up to the front seat so I can see a little better. That's actually not bad at all. That's pretty good. It's a nice wide view of everything too. Definitely can see a, a good amount. Anyways, let's get everything all put back together We'll hit the road and we'll see uh, what the visibility looks like on the actual road. But this is a cool feature real quick. I can swipe the screen and I can switch to the front camera, which I can adjust slightly here if I want. And then of course I can adjust it here at the actual lens as well, which is really nice. So I can make little adjustments there. Swipe it like that. I can see the back or I can see both cameras at the same time. I can change the brightness. Wow, it's actually all the way up. I can drop it down if it's nighttime. Um, it's also a dash camera. If I see something going on, I can hit that picture and it captures a picture. I can turn off the mic recording if I want. I can lock everything up. If I stop it, I can go into my features here. It's got a G sensor to detect like if you're in an accident and needs to capture, or let's say you have to do some type of a harsh maneuver. It captures that part of the clip and stores it in a separate file. Format the SD card, change the clock settings, screensaver movie clip time, resolution, reverse lines. Um, I really don't need those because it's not being used as a reverse camera. And uh, change my volume. I probably want to turn that down quite a bit. I can flip the image if I'd like. Um, right now it's set up perfectly. That is really, really cool. Anyways, let's get everything put back together and I'll give you my opinion once we get on the road with it. Okay, so we're in the truck. Everything is set up. Everything's been put away and patched back up and the install is done. Let's go ahead and start the truck up. All right. You see it says wolf box on the screen. And there we go. So check this out. I'll zoom in here a little bit so you can see what's going on. I can actually touch the screen and kind of move it around a little bit if I'd like. So that is actually really cool. Um, I think I need to do that actually with the um, with the way the line, which you can't see anymore. So the little line for the heat strip back there isn't in the picture. But that is really cool. You can see both views. See just the back, just the front. All right, so we are gonna hit the road and we're gonna see how this thing performs. Installation, I'd probably give it like a 2 out of 10 as far as difficulty. Only because you have to know how to pop panels and get back behind things. But as far as like plugging everything in and getting it connected, it's really only two plugs. Your power, which is USB-C, uh, specifically for this one. So don't use this for anything else according to them. And then you have your rear camera connector right there, which just plugs right in. So everything's working great now that we've gone to our second unit. So we did have to replace the first one because it wasn't working properly. So it wouldn't actually detect the rear camera. It did it one time, but then after that it wouldn't work anymore. This one is working perfectly. Still got to adjust the date and time. Just the brightness. You can take a picture of what you're seeing, which is kind of cool. So if I'm looking at the front, I want to take a picture of something I can. I wonder if I can also move the front camera around a little bit. Yep, yeah, I can. Let's see. Oh yeah. Be nice if you could zoom out, which I don't think it'll let you do. You can definitely make some adjustments to it, but it's only up and down adjustments, so it's not side to side. So for me, that's probably the best view I could have. And then this is kind of a cool view, this one right here. You can't make any adjustments at that point, but it shows you pretty much everything. Yeah, that's probably going to be where I keep it. Put it right about here, and it gives me good visibility and everything going on. Very cool. I'd love to know, what do you guys think? Is this something that 
is grown on you all? Do you have a truck with this technology already built in like we do on our Denali? And have you learned to like it or have you learned to hate it or you just do you not use it? So I'm, I'd really be interested in knowing how you feel about the rear view camera technology. It's becoming more and more uh, available on luxury trim trucks and you know, in SUVs and all sorts of other vehicles. And, you know, I think I'm gonna like it. As long as it works or performs similar to how it does in our GMC, I'm pretty sure I'll like it. But only time will tell, and I will let you know how it holds up. Okay, so it works pretty dang well. It's a little bit jittery whenever you're moving versus the OEM, but it's not bad. I mean, it, it's definitely a good camera. It works well, the resolution looks good, it's nice and bright. Uh, you know, it's probably not overly bright because I have the, the tint on the back window and you can see the line there from one of the, the defrosters. I'm probably going to shift it slightly to see if I can move it around the defroster so it doesn't interfere as much. But it seems to be working pretty dang good. I'll definitely give you guys a follow-up if I experience any issues with it. Um, you know I always do that regardless of how I get equipment. Uh, this it was a pretty easy install overall again I didn't have any issues with it from that perspective but it's going to be really interesting to see how it holds up down here in the South Texas heat in the long run I mean, you know that's going to be the ultimate thing for me I'm glad I eliminated the other dash cam because this one takes up less room and it gives me extra functionality but you know give me your opinion what do you think has this technology grown on you do you have a truck with it do you, uh, do you prefer it now that you've had it? Or if you don't have it, is it something you've looked forward to? I'd love to know what your, what your opinion and feedback on this tech is. Anyways, guys, I sure hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up. We'll talk to you again real soon.